right, welcome to another episode of The Metal Boys, where each and every week, Jim and I try to keep up with what's happening in the metal community. Advising you all. And this week, going back in time, pulling out one of the big four, the recently re released album called Worship Music Anthrax. Everybody has been waiting for this one. Worship Music Anthrax. <laughs> Jim, I remember back in the day, you had Metallica happening on the West Coast. Who was happening on the East Coast? Anthrax. From the, you know, the Jersey, Johnny yes. Z and the Boys, Metal Joe, the East Coast Metal Militia. And you had, uh, of course, the Fistful of Metal with that classic album cover. Neil Turbin left. We covered that on another episode of The Metal Voice. And in comes Joey Belladonna, who was a bit of a drummer. I think was kind of thrust yes. unwillingly into the frontman role. Came out with uh, the first, uh, second album with him. Or first album with him. Their second album was called Spreading the Disease. Considered a classic. Considered a classic amongst all thrashers out there. Know, Armed and Dangerous, Madhouse, AIR, Lone Justice. Uh, you know what? Production-wise, a little weak on the production. I mean, but if you look at the Metallica second album compared to this one, there's no comparison. Absolutely no comparison. Then it came out with. Uh, but personally, I loved yeah. it, and it was like a nine out of ten. If the, the production was up to par, I think. Oh, it would have been but then cool. again, you got to think of it. I think they were still on an independent label back then. Yeah, for sure. They weren't on a major label. In comes the next album, Amongst, Amongst the, the Living, Living, and that's where they went into. I believe they were in the ends, caught in a mosh. Eddie Kramer came in and law. produced it. That's right. Uh, that was, I guess, amongst all Anthrax eyes, probably one of the classics, yeah. the, the the pinnacle, or we'll call it. They're probably one of the regarded as one of their best albums out there. Got a little more on the comic book side there. Yeah, with a the little, especially with the release. I think all that culminated with the "I Am the Man" EP. Yeah, which were they released separately. They never put that on necessarily no. on the album, but they got that EP, and it, it's kind of like new metal rap, yeah. sort of a little. Humor, but humor is okay. It's yeah, I mean, world. looking back, you got the big four. You got Metallica, who was set on world domination. You got Slayer, who wanted to convert the masses over to Satan. You got Megadeth, which was just revenge based uh, to That's get back at Metallica. Metallica. <laughs> and then you got Anthrax, who who was, never took themselves so seriously. Which is okay. Uh, especially, you know, if you look at the, uh, the way they dress with around the, on the man, you know, uh, and I remember we, we follow that uniform, you know, let's go out and get the most obnoxious looking shorts, fluorescent all the better, with the big wide brim baseball caps flipped up like this. I mean, that was, the, with the long, long, long hair, that was the uniform back then, if you were an Anthrax fan. And uh, they, and they weren't, they weren't afraid to be outside the box, you no. know, partnering with Public Enemy. That's right, which is another great song. I mean, that broke the Bring whole... the noise! Bring the... <laughs> <laughs> Bass, how low can you go? <laughs> but, that, you know, that, and that's what I loved about Anthrax, you know. They, they didn't take themselves all that seriously. And also, might have cost them a few fans over the yeah. years because people didn't like it when you went outside the box. They wanted you to be, like, inside that where they know what to expect. Yeah, sure. So... I think if you look at the progression of some of the other bands at the time, that probably hindered their progression. Yes. And I think the spacing between albums was a little longer than, and than yeah. some of the bands at the time too. So, But now, you know, then what <laughs> came out after that? State Jim? of Euphoria, which is another solid album. Again, a little weak on the production. Problem is with the 80s, there was a lot, a lot of thrash bands were out there, and the sound wasn't where it is today. A great, personally, another 9, 9, nine and a half out of 10 for me. State of Your Four is a great overall uh, sounding really? album. Uh, Song-wise, song structure, melody, it's great. Then you have Persistence of Time, which came right after. And that's when it started going down a little bit. Oh, okay. And that's where Joey Del Belladonna, you know, got the boot uh, from Anthrax. Brought searching for more Bush. of a, Yeah, searching more for more of a grunge style vocalist, a little lower, a little more raspier, yeah, I don't, a little more know, heavier. Belladonna, you know, he, he wasn't the strongest vocalist, lead vocalist out there. Uh, but I had a chance to see them open for uh, Angel Retribution, J Judas Priest comeback tour with yeah, Rob yeah, yeah. Halford. And they were opening band. The classic lineup was there. Uh, yeah. What a great opening band. We had a blast all there. They brought out, I think it was a yeah. celebration of their 25th anniversary of spreading the disease. Nothing but a good time. They're out there having a good yeah. time. Translates over to the crowd. One of the best opening bands I've ever seen. Uh, but again, they lost Joey Belladonna. Now he's back. He's back. So, uh, just but before Billy Donna was back, and before they made this album, they had a singer called Dan Nelson. There's an answer to a trivia. Who question. actually wrote this album, or a lot of the songs on this album, and actually you go on YouTube and hear the songs that are on this album on YouTube. I mean, played live. That is, 
So he had some sort of incident with the band. He was in the band for two years, kicked him out. They go, hey, John Bush, can you do an album with us? Because we got all these tracks for a new album. John Bush goes, I don't think so. You kicked me I got, out. I got the Armored Saint thing happening. Then they go, hey, Joey, can you come back and, you know, let's, 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 let's you know. <laughs> let's Wait, Joey, Joey's always like, even Person. for this, the tour I saw him opening for Judas Priest, like, ah, we can't get anybody else. Joey, come on, come on I, back. I, I saw the same tour that you saw with Judas Priest and Anthrax opening up, and I go, the first thing that stood out was Joey's voice on that tour. Oh, really? And I found that he was a little more grittier, he wasn't as high, he was singing more, you know, high, the mid highs. And a little more raspier in his voice, and I go, man, he sounded great. Oh, so it's like and it translates. Yeah, when I heard this, I'm like, to this album. who's that singing? I had to double check three or four times. Is that really Joey Belladonna? He's. This is his best singing album. He sounds fantastic. The songs are fantastic. I mean, the, one of the things that strikes me, first of all, hearing the drums. I remember back in the day, I had a, I had a T-shirt that said, "I want to be Charlie Benante's right <laughs> right foot," uh, and that it comes through on the first couple of tracks. Then the fact that there's really, get rid of all the instrumentals, there's 10 tracks. They didn't try to put in filler. Say, like the CD, we got to get 16 on here, 16 tracks on here somewhere. No, they went with 10 quality tracks. So you got that consistency yes. throughout the album. And each song is, is very consistent and strong. They're, each song is a very strong, brings it back to the classic album days where they only had eight or yeah. nine. So they can put the quality over the quantity. They can put that into the album. And that's what they did on this worship music. Mid-tempo, it's not a thrash album. It's a heavy metal album. And anybody who likes Anthrax in the past that knows the real Anthrax, the back catalog and all, will love this album. If you don't know Anthrax, it might take you a little time to get used to it. But I suggest you listen to this a few times, and once you listen to it a few times, it's addictive. It's a great album. It's a contemporary and, sounding, and, very modern sounding album, very yeah. well produced. And here's the funny thing, Alan. There's only 11 songs listed on the back. I don't know if this is a Canadian pressing or not. Maybe I got a limited edition worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> 11 songs listed here. However, there's, I believe, 13 on the CD. So the whole song order is all messed up because of the two And intros. there's a hidden track, you were saying. And there's a hidden track. At the end of the track, uh, I believe it's 11, right? If you wait five minutes, it's another minutes. song. That's really hidden. Yeah, it's very hidden. I, to me, it's like, you know, why bother with hidden tracks? Just put it as another track. But overall, Worship Music, one of the best Anthrax albums out there. I'm really proud of Joey. I've said in the past I like Neil Turbin, but I think Joey's doing an absolutely great job on this album. Thanks for watching another edition of The Metal Voice. If you want to reach us, you can uh, email us at themetalvoice at gmail.com. Or check out our Whenever website at www.themetalvoice.com. See you next time.